All right, good morning. Happy New Year's. I know it's a little premature to actually uh, be wishing Happy New Year's because it's not just yet, but almost. This is the time, the moment where all social media gets booming with the hashtag New Year, New Me. And, uh, you know, we're already, yeah, we're already tired. It hasn't even really begun. I'm going to put this over here. But the hashtag New Year, New Me, it, it's, it's anywhere and everywhere. But today's talk is actually titled New Year, Old Me. Okay? We're going to go depth in that one. And everyone's like, woo, excited, yeah? Because, you know, New Year, New Me, that lasts about like two days and then we're back to our old self and who cares? So this one's actually great. You know, hashtag no effort, hashtag. Uh, mediocrity, excited, so, you know, but no, 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 I'm not saying new year present me, I'm saying new year old me, okay? See, when I was little, I liked medieval times. I loved knights, I loved the warriors, the swords, I loved everything about it, and my parents were a little bit worried because I really liked, you know, the medieval times, and I wanted to be a knight more than anything in the world, I wanted to be a knight. And my parents are like, ah, he just likes it because of the swords. Well, yeah, it was partially because of the swords, but I actually liked their values and their qualities, um, honor, courage, uh, you know, uh, perseverance, everything. And I actually wrote a long list of qualities, and I would put it in my wallet. And when I was a kid, I would take out my wallet, didn't even have money, but I had that little paper, and I will read that little paper and be like, okay, honor, courage, justice, perseverance. And, you know, I, I kept saying it. And I, actually, at New Year's, one of my New Year's resolutions is I want to be a knight in shining armor. This was it. I was little. When I was really, really small, I wanted to be a fire truck. Not a fireman. I wanted to be a fire truck. <laughs> My sister's like, ah, he's not going to be the brightest. But when I was little, that's what I wanted. And then I grew up and like, I grew out of that one. Now I want to be a knight in shining armor because that's more mature. So as it goes on, statistically, they say there's a university of Scranton. Uh, I believe I said that right. It's a university in Pennsylvania. And uh, this university made a statistics saying that only 40% of Americans only 40% of Americans actually do New Year's resolutions. 40%, okay? Out of that 40%, only 8%, okay? Only 8% is actually going to succeed. Okay, now if you look at the population, that is 325.7 million people, okay? Now, if you get 40% of that, it is 130 million, uh, 280,000, okay? That's 40%. Now, 8% of that is going to be 10 million, uh, 10,422,000, okay? That's 8%. Now, kind of something like that, okay? So 10 million is still a lot, like 8%, 10 million? Good for you. That's awesome. Now, the question is, are you in the 8%, the 40%, or the other percent that didn't even do New Year's resolution? Now, as I was looking at these statistics, I was, saw another statistic, which is not really correlated, not really related, but I was uh, quite saddened when I saw it. And I, there is a correlation, and I, I'm going to explain in a moment. Do you know the statistics on suicides? Now, in 2017, which has incremented a lot since 2016, it actually jumped a lot, it was 44,965 people that died committing suicide. 44,000. Now, to put that into perspective, okay, do you know this King? You know where we are in Keene right now? So Keene has 6,440 people. 6,000. 44,965 committed suicide. So King, gone. Cleburne, Texas, which is a little town next to us, has a movie theater, has a little mall. It's a little bit, you know, bigger. That one has 30,000. 30,230 people, okay? 30,000. Cleburne, gone. Cleburne and Keene, gone. Burleson is a little bit bigger, has two movie theaters. Wow. And, you know, you know Chick-fil-A, and, you know, it's, it's, it's up there, okay? That one has 46,000. So, technically, only 2,000 of Burleson survived, 2,000 2, people, okay? So, when you walk out this morning, you walk out this morning, you look at where you live, and you look at all the houses, all of those were depressed. All of those died. All of those committed suicide, Okay? Are you going to be a number? I'm not talking about suicide anymore. I'm talking about are you going to be a number that you get to live today? You chose life. You chose to come this morning. You chose to have a New Year's resolution. Are you going to be the 40%, the 8%, or the other percent? Not suicide, the other percent that didn't even care. We're given a gift. And the reason why we do not fulfill our New Year's resolution 
the reason why it doesn't really happen is because something along the way gets broken. And let me put it this way. I don't know if you call it vase or vase. For today, we're going to call it a vase, okay? So a vase, it's a gorgeous little vase, and it holds flowers, and they're beautiful flowers. And the flowers get broken. Not the flowers. The vase. Okay, you're, you're playing basketball, you know, Kobe. And it hits the vase, and the vase breaks. Now, when the vase breaks, you're like, you know what? I'm going to take it upon me. I'm going to fix this vase. Now, depending on your personality, you're either going to be like, eh, I'm not going to fix it. I'm going to do the whole new year, new me, and buy a bigger and better vase. Or you could go and be like, you know what? I'm going to fix the vase. It doesn't matter because somewhere along the way, when it got broken, you put the vase back together or you buy a new one, bigger, shinier, prettier one. But no matter what you do, we forget its functionality. And we spend so much time trying to fix what was broken that when we do it, we're like, ha, there it is. And we forget the flowers that it was, it was holding. We forget its purpose. We forget the beauty of the flowers that w the vase was holding. Um, I, for those who don't know, uh, my family and I own a ranch, uh, Inter Wellness. Uh, it's a health retreat, and people come here, and they do health, and, and um, yeah, it's a whole lifestyle change. It's really interesting, and people from all over the world come. Uh, we have people from the Guadalupe Islands, uh, you know, and we've heard different languages, French. Well, in this particular time, these uh, people from Korea flew from Korea or rented our place, and they, they're like, we want to do our own thing. We want to, you know, meditate and do this stuff, and, you know, we exchange knowledge. And then this ex in exchanging knowledge of us giving health and them uh, uh, sharing their culture with us, we saw 300 Koreans from Korea spread it out through around my lake, and they were meditating. I'm like, and this is not like a hmm in the floor. No, this is standing up for hours and hours, no sleeping, unless that's another, you know, uh, awesome talent that they possess. But no, they, they, they would open their eyes or look around, feel the sun, and they'll close their eyes for hours and hours. And I was amazed by this. And I was just like, wow. So I finally got to talk to one. I'm like, really, what do you guys do with meditation? And you know, he explained a little bit. And he's like, you know what? We, when we meditate, we go through everything that has hurt, uh, hurt us, everything that you know has damaged us, and we just discard it. We just throw it away. That's it. We're never going to think about it again. It's done. He's like, no offense to you Americans. Usually when they say something, no offense, it's usually like, Whoosh. but no offense to you Americans, but you always want to get better. You're always trying to overcome stuff, and you're trying to overcome that, and you're trying to do this, and trying always gets in the way. You're always trying when trying becomes your lifestyle, and then you're like, oh, I'm trying to, uh, I'm trying, New Year's, I'm going to try harder, and then, you know, it's day two, you failed, well, next year, I'm going to try again, you know, and have you ever done that, where, like, you're going to study at 4 p.m., it's 4.05, and you're like, well, I missed well, I'll start at five. And then at five, five oh five, and you're like, oh, I'll start at six. We always try to try and do it better. We don't do it. Just do it. Okay, there's not a Nike commercial, but it could. When I realized what um, these Koreans were saying and how it ties into our, our resolutions and why we miss out, because trying becomes a lifestyle. And we never actually succeeded. We never even get there. I want to read something. I'm actually going to, it's kind of easier to pull my phone. New Year's resolution, bring your Bible. That's, that's, that's a good one. But I'm going to read it here just because I get to see a little better. Okay, it's found in Micah. Micah, uh, uh, here we go. Micah 7, 19. He will turn again. He will save, ha he will turn again. He will have compassion upon us. He will subdue our iniquities. And thou wilt cast all their sins into the depths of the sea. Okay. Cast your sins to the depths of the sea. That was partly what they were doing in meditation. They were just throwing it away. We have become uh, incredible scuba divers, and we're like, ooh, I could go get it. You know? God will throw it to the depths of the sea, but no, we think we're awesome scuba divers, and we go all the way down, and we go and we get it. I'm going to tell you a lot of things on how, uh, no, a lot of things can be said on how to keep that resolution alive, how to succeed. And you're going to read a lot of stuff of like, have accountability, tell a friend and make them, you know, 
hold you accountable to it. Uh, make realistic goals, you know, not, you know, I'm going to lose, you know, 500 pounds and, you know, whatever in, in a day. Because, you know, it takes time. You Be realistic. Yeah, all those things are true. But there's something that stems from it and something that's going to help you with every, every resolution that you want to have. Simple. And you're going to be like, really? Sounds cliche. It's even kind of, I don't know how to say it, but get closer to God. See, when you get closer to God, you realize the priorities in your other resolutions. I've mentioned it before when we did prayer. When you do prayer and you pray for stuff and you're like, okay, pray for this person, pray for that. Then you realize, wow, those people actually matter to me. Okay, so why am I not spending time with them? I mentioned it before. Are you When you spend time to God, with God in, in prayer and in the Bible, you don't really are going to pray for your phone or the TV or your gaming. You don't pray for those things. Why? Because they shouldn't occupy. And you know that you can't really pray for those because those are superficial things that are not going to add anything in your life. But if you come to that realization through prayer, then why do you spend so much time in that instead of the stuff that you should and would actually pray for? <sighs> see, when you read the Bible, you see, in, 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 it, it makes you wiser. It makes you more realistic and in tune with what actually is real. See, s Solomon, the king of wisdom, he, um, he believed this. I'm going to read another Bible verse. Because, I mean, honestly, I could talk any truth, but why when it's, it's all here? Here in Proverbs 1, 7, fear, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. Here you have instruction. You have wisdom right here given to you. Only fools would despise it and say, no, new year, new me, bigger, better. When the old is forever, the old you, and we're going to get into it. Here we have another one. It says, Proverbs 3, 5, trust the Lord with all thine heart and lean not unto your own uh, understanding. But we try to get our own resolutions, our own, our own ways of howing, having to be able to conquer ourselves and our fear when lean not on your own understanding. When you realize, okay, I want to lose weight. I want to have a, a resolution of, you know, not listening to music, not doing that. When, when you come to all those conclusions, Yes, you might, you might succeed, you might conquer, but when you get to, to read the Bible, it gets concrete because then you actually get to know why you're doing it. See, in Jeremiah 17, 9, the heart is deceitful above all things and beyond cure. Who will understand it? But no, there we go again and again and again saying, no, 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 I got this. I know why I'm doing it. I know how to get better. In 1 Corinthians 10, 31, whether therefore ye eat or drink or whatsoever ye do, do it all in the glory of God. Once you read the Bible and you get in that contact, you, you get to realize why you want to lose the weight, why you want to better yourself. Is it in the glory of God? Is your New Year's resolution really for yourself? Is it selfish? Hmm. Philippians 3, 18, 19. Well, I'm going to read 19. Whose end is destruction, whose God is their belly, and whose glory is in their shame, who mind earthly things? Uh, in their belly. First hmm. Corinthians 6, 19, 20. Do you not know that your bodies are the temple of the Holy Spirit, who is in you, whom you have received from God? You are not your own. You were bought at a price. Therefore, honor God with your bodies. <coughs> I'm not here to mock. I'm not here to push down your New Year's resolution. I'm just saying that when you have God in you, when you have God in you, when life tries to break you like that vase, something else happens, okay? We get broken and we put it together and God allows us to be put together and we still forget to put the flowers. We forget to show that beauty that was intended in to begin with. But when... God is in you, and life tries to break you, something really interesting happens. Life grabs you, it goes, uh, uh, and it breaks you, okay? I can't see because of the light. But when life tries to break you, all you got to do is just shake it up a bit, okay? And I'm going to encourage you to actually do this in life. When they 
do harmful things, when you, when you tripped up, when you did a New Year's resolution and all of a sudden it's day three and you ate a full cake, just shake it off, okay? And do it again. Don't try, do it. Just shake it up, okay? I don't care if someone tells you a bad whatever they want to do and bullying you and all this stuff. You can do whatever you want, okay? You can go like this. They're going to be like, okay, on top of him being, you know, you know, loser. Now he's weird. I, I don't care. Shake it up. Because God intended you to shake it up and have light. I, man, I, I would love it. Imagine someone's bullying. I, I, I would love it. I wish I had this knowledge when I was smaller, when I was a kid. This would have been great. Hey, yo, loser, what you doing? I'll be like, I'll be like, whoa, shake it up. You don't control me. You have no power over me. God made me. He made me who I am, and I'm going to try harder, and I'm going to shine the light. And after you shake it off and you shake it out, after you shake it out, that's when you're supposed to sh you shine the light. That's when you have to be like, hey, you call me that? It doesn't matter. God loves you. I love you too. How awesome would that be? And that person would be like, what is up with that guy? Yeah, he might be called weird, but you're shining the light. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. That's a children's, children's thing, right? Why did we stop singing it? It's not cool anymore. We outgrew it. This is, this is, the whole, whole thing of the message is this. New Year's old me. This little light of mine. We sang it as kids. We had pure hearts. We did. We were innocent. We, we never had an intent to harm someone. I'm not saying you guys do, but things have changed. It's time to be that knight in shining armor to save that child in you. Because let me tell you something. If your five-year-old you would be next to you right now, would he be disappointed? Are you exactly what you thought you would be when you were six? Would you say stuff and use the vocabulary that you do or do things with the guy or the girl and the party and the drinking and all that stuff, and the kid would look at you like, that's me? That's what I'm going to grow up to be? That's how disappointed would you be at six to see yourself now? Is it too late? How, how awesome would it be if your New Year's resolution would be a knight in shining armor and save that kid? Save you. See, in the Bible it says, Matthew 18, 3, and said, Truly I say to you, unless you turn and become like children, you will never enter in the kingdom of heaven. Why did he say that? Children have a very likeness with the character of God. They're very pure. They're very happy. They enjoy things. Don't you remember the times where times were, yeah, Marcel, but things were a lot simpler back then. I mean, I didn't have tests. I didn't have chemistry. I mean, come on. I just played in the leaves all day. And yes, that might be true, but it doesn't mean that you grow out of that amazingness. We try to grow up and grow out of it. That's our problem. New year, new me. Why? Here's the thing, okay? When I was broken and I said, I, realistically it happened, and I'm like, okay, fine, I get it. I can't wear my knight in shining armor to school. It's kind of unpractical to wear my helmet inside the car while I'm driving. And then once I did away with that, I'm like, okay, fine, time to mature myself. I did away with all the qualities and values that came with it. Why? When you say, okay, I can't sing Little Light of Mine anymore because I'm a grown-up, so, but you stop shining. What happened? When we try to get stronger and bigger and better, this happens. Pretty cool. Now, if I would be ready for battle right now, I don't feel very protected, okay? Especially if this happens. Okay. Ooh la la. That was nice. You can't redo that one. Okay, so. Hold this real quick. I'm sorry. <laughs> I should have warned you. It's pretty heavy. <laughs> sorry. Okay, in all fairness, that's how little I've been, I've been, yeah, prepared for this. <laughs> Give me one second. 
she just went, whoop. <laughs> okay, so new year, new me. This is what we do, okay? This is this is this is real. We're like, I'm stronger, I'm better, I'm better. Listen to music, I'm cool, I'm ready. Okay? We outgrow the shield and protection that God has for us. This doesn't really fit. We try to come to church, we kind of read the Bible, we dress up really nicely. It doesn't fit because we want the bigger, the better me. New year, new me. I'm telling you guys, new year, old me. Because that child, it fits the armor. And as, as childish it may be, like, I can't be a child, but at least you're covered. And God's going to pick you up and say, come here, my child, and call you as his own. And when the sword falls, you are protected. Now, I want to read this verse. We read it this morning in German, which I found fantastic. Finally, be strong in the Lord and in my, his mighty power. Okay, this is in Ephesians 6.10. Finally, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Put on the full armor of God so that you can take your strong stand against the devil's scheme. I'm going to read the whole thing. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, which is true. You go to school and you really be like, ah, oh, don't hit me. No. The struggles of drama and societies and friends and peer pressure and all that, that's not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against authorities, against the powers of dark world. The shield fell. Actually, there's a fu funny story on that. Therefore, put on the full armor of God so that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground. And after you have done everything to stand, stand firm. Then with the belt of truth buckled around your waist, with the breastplate of righteousness in place. And with your feet fitted with readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. In addition to all this, take up your shield of faith which is with which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. The helmet, take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit. So it's a, it's a great Bible verse. I, I, I absolutely love it. Uh, I wasn't going to tell you about the story this morning, but I am. Uh, I was driving, and I had to fit this little guy in, in a suburban, so it fits. So I opened the car, I put it in, I'm like, all right, ready, I'm with a sword. I'm like, I hope I don't get stopped by the cops. This is going to be awkward to explain, you know. It's like, step out of the car, sir. I'm like, okay, <laughs> you know. So um, as I'm driving, I, I want to take a shortcut because I'm like, okay, i got to get there ready and, you know, do breakfast. And I get, <laughs> and I got stuck in the mud really, really, really bad. So I call my dad. I'm like, dad. This happened. So he gets here with a Prius. This little guy had to go in the Prius. So he, uh, his shield fell, but um, he didn't fit. And uh, my dad looked at me. He's like, son, like the enemy, you know, you have a message. And I feel like the enemy is trying to get you down and trying to not, not get there. So don't get stressed. Calm. And he prayed with me. And I was like, okay. Like, it, I can see that. And I, I actually answered. I'm like, I don't think this was the enemy. Like, I went through the mud knowing I was going to get stuck. Like, I'm like, uh, I, I could just imagine the enemy being like, yo, I didn't do anything. Like, that was all him. But the point is, the point is, if I saw it coming, why didn't I stop it? Why did I still went through? And this is the only reason why I'm sharing this story with you this morning is because we often see stuff. We often see that, okay, I'm stronger, I'm better, and I could beat it, and we get stuck in the mud. We think that we could pass this, and you think you're protected, but the shield's going to protect oh so much. I really want to, you know, I, I, I practiced when I was a kid, and um, even with my parents, I'll be like, ah, and I'll come, like, really close to, to their face, and they're used to it now. They're just like, oh, Marcel, one day you're going to hit me, but, you know. But I wanted to bring someone up, but, you know, I, I, I don't want to scare someone. I want to put the shield and just go like this. You think they'll be covered, which begs a question of the next question. Do you think in your life, do you think you're covered? Do you think that the enemy just wants to go <laughs> to you? You think you're like, meh, that didn't touch me. Or you think that's going to blow you away? Think about it. Are you covered? The only way this shield is going to fit you, the only way, <sighs> one, New Year's resolution, get closer to God. Number two, it says it here in this Bible verse, stand firm. 
It's the only way, guys. I'm telling you from the bottom of my heart. Your New Year's resolution of diet, of exercise, of dress code, or friends, or habits, or anything you want is not going to mean anything if you cannot stand. Stand for something or fall for anything. Okay? The o- other thing that's going to make this fit, okay? Get closer to God. Stand for something. The other one is love. Love makes everything tie in together. And I'm going to read the final Bible verse here. We have time. See, in Mark 12, 31, it says, The second is this, love thy neighbor as yourself. There is no commandment greater than this. And we've been through this. What do you mean there is no greater commandment than this? Love thy neighbor as thyself. Because when you love yourself, then you realize, I do deserve to eat better, to dress better, to listen to stuff better, to get closer to God better. Because this is what covers me. This is a shield of protection. This is what life is meant for. This is getting ready for battle. Why do we think we see the enemy coming and everyone warns us and we're like, nah, this little shield I, th- I think will do because I'm bigger. New year, new me. Anyway, right? We can't even lift the sword. No offense. <laughs> Sorry. We will try it again in a bit. But, um, <sighs> New Year, old me, guys. Don't forget who you were. Don't forget the, the dreams that you had, the, the purpose, the closeness that you had with your family, with God, with your friends, the desire to actually have fun for what it actually meant not the distractions and the superficial things that they are now. (sighs) I'm really looking forward to this next year. There's things that have happened in my life, uh, physically, emotionally, that make me question, how did I even get this far? I mean, really. I mean, I've... Anyway, I'm not going to get into it, but... (sighs) We're here for a reason. And I think we could put on that shield and confront 2019 head on. And for the obstacles that were in 2018 and this year, be grateful. They made you stronger. They made you better. But they didn't make you bigger than the Bible. They didn't make you bigger than the shield that God has provided for you. Because it's your perfect size. And love's going to make it fit perfectly and i pray for love in your in your heart in your daily life and when you once you express love and you share love you're gonna let your little light shine and sing it it's okay you're not regressing you're not going back you're not taking a step to immaturity go go into your school this little light on mine hum it if you want and then shake it off because i can't assure you I, I, I'm against the people that come up here and be like, oh, you know, 2019 is going to have great things for you. I, I know this. What are you, cook, fortune cookie? No, things are not going to get nice. They're going to get tougher. God didn't promise you a great life. He promised he's not going to leave you not a single step of the way. But we have to do our part in putting that armor and going to battle and knowing that he's right there with us. I don't know. I I don't have many regrets in my life, but I do regret giving up in that knight in shining armor. I want to pick it up this year, and I want to save myself. That kid that had that vision and being like, I could be a hero. Maybe not to you. Maybe I can't save your life. Maybe you can't save anyone else's life, but you could save yours with God's help. And we have... We have the weapons to do it. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, thank you for everything you have given to us. Your love is the perfect shield. It's the perfect weapon against the enemy, Lord. And I ask for forgiveness for not using it, Lord, and allowing so many so many blows and then blaming you when I got hurt for not realizing that 
you gave us all the instruments to go to war and we could go to war together, not against each other, Lord. But if the time comes and they try to hurt us, may we just shake it off. May we shine bright. May they be able to see you through us. May they tremble because that light, knowing that who we represent, be brighter than any darkness that comes our way, Lord. I pray that in this new year, may it not be the new year new us. May it be not be for sure the new year present us, but the old one, the child in us, the one that is alike your character and the one that you want to save. Guide us and protect us. In the name of Jesus we pray. Amen.